Watch out, mister. Here comes the twister. This is Rudy Ray Moore. Yes, I'm the human tornado. I chain down thunder and handcuff lightning. I'm so damn strong, it's sometimes frightening. I grabbed a star traveling a million miles a minute and slowed it down to the state speed limit. Yes, I'm the human tornado. Spinning, grinning, and sinning. I used an earthquake to mix my milkshake. I eat an avalanche when I want ice cream. I punched a hurricane and made it a breeze. I swallowed an iceberg and didn't freeze. The human tornado. Bringing cash and talking trash. See me, delayed, relayed, mislaid, and parlayed. Jump, thump, bumped, and mugwump. The human Tornado! Rated it on! Under 17, not admitted without a parent. What's up, guys? Welcome to Good Bad Wrestling No Holds Barred. This is the show where we dig up cringeworthy wrestling from the past and then bury it again and sometimes do interviews. I am your host, John. Jack Brinks here. And like I said, we do some interviews. That's what we got going on today. We have with us in the house, or rather uh, via satellite, um, <laughs> a, a PWG star, a guy known around the indie scene from Ring of Honor and Wrestling Society X and GCW and every goddamn where else, plus the movie Nacho Libre. We got Human Tornado in the house. What's up, brother? What's going on, fellas? How you doing? Well, I could complain, but then again, we're all necessarily saying the same thing. Goddamn right. <laughs> how you how you holding up in the uh, the lockdown due to the ongoing situation? Man, I've never been on the ankle monitor before in my life, but, uh, you know, everybody gets new experience sometimes. <laughs> I was telling my girlfriend that. I was like, this is this must be what house arrest is like. Yeah, it's just the food's better, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Really how it went, you know? House arrest with encouraged takeout. Yeah, it's like, I get Cheerios. Y'all get Cheerios over there? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all right, man. Well, you know, like I said in the intro, normally what we do is we dig up the, the cringeworthy stuff, but we like doing interviews too. And we like talking to people, um, that are, that are a little more known on the indie scene than, than, uh, than like, you know, from WWE or something like that. And it, and it no, does. Okay. I, I, I get, I get noticed like a little bit. I mean, it's just a cool smidge of, you know, like in big ass planet. I mean, I wasn't necessarily ready for it. You know? I'm, I'm skinny, man. I'm skinny. But <laughs> if you see a picture. <laughs> Yeah, picture. I'm not, I'm not like buff like the rock, like in that background photo. Like you guys got like big ass buff ass on this ass, like you know rock. I'm more like a Kevin Hart figure right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're you're quite quite a bit taller than Kevin Hart. Well, yeah, and I don't need a gun either. So you got a gun in his hand. Like you got better. You, right you got better dance moves. <laughs> oh yeah, 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 and I get down. But then he did like cut a cut a rug on Raw's War. I was like, I thought that was a, a cool moment right there. It was like he did nothing but that cool dance, and then I was like, he didn't get it out. Of <laughs> <laughs> so so speaking of dancing, I want to I want to kind of just jump into your style, right? Because you you incorporated dancing in the ring probably more and and better than anybody that I can think of. I was watching some of your highlight shit today, and I was laughing my ass off. Uh, where uh -huh. where did you get that idea from? Where did that inspiration come from? Um, honestly, I still don't even know what the gimmick is. I mean, <laughs> I kind of just been like, well, not to sound like a jackass, kind of been riding the waves of, you know, bands and people all around me uh, and training and stuff, learning. And there was really no set character other than, you know, cool ass name and, you know, I guess yeah. <clears throat> suitable gear. I mean, it wasn't necessarily tights. It wasn't those traditional tights and boots. It was like, you know, three piece suit. Yeah, man. And the, all the cool dancing, all the cool dancing and uh, moves and stuff that like came from like random, you know, anything I liked back in the day, like watching Breaking. I mentioned Breaking was like on the pop locking and stuff. I was like, man, some of these things can turn into pretty cool ass wrestling moves, and some of them did, some of them didn't. You know, so I used to play uh, sports back in you know, school and stuff like that, like track and field. So you know, I probably used any one of those elements in the same shit. And, and were you were you a, a showman and and were you cutting up before wrestling? Were you like the the class clown guy and dancing just to pop the boys and stuff before wrestling, or is that something that uh, came out? More more like a only child loner. I mean, if we chatted, we chatted. Pretty simple over here. <laughs> 
So how did you how did you break into wrestling? So you said as a you did track. What other kind of sports did you do, and did that have an influence on uh, you getting into wrestling? Yeah, like around like elementary school, like I was really focused on basketball and like track and field, you know. But track uh, got a little cool. Then I ended up moving and stuff, and then uh, <clears throat> there's really no real sports opportunities in like you know like high school and stuff for me. So so I, accidentally I ran into volleyball because it was something different. And uh, when people put volleyball all over. I mean, men's volleyball is uh, just like pro wrestling is secretly the shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nobody, nobody else knows. It's like, like Kobe Bryant's uh, daughter is still living. You know what I'm saying? Except playing basketball, she played you know volleyball, and like she can easily cross over and just start dunking out of nowhere. Because after years of volleyball, it's like all it took for me was one year. That's why I started dunking. I'm like, oh, this was cool. And and were so, you were you playing uh, two on two like beach or were you playing uh, what is it five on five? Yeah, we played six on six, six on, on the six. court on the hard hard floor where we played basketball at. So you know, what I'm saying I had both elements just on the, the same floors. It, it was cool, but and then and everyone then, that plays basketball can definitely play volleyball. It's like it's, it's a get your ass dunked on the music basket type <laughs> game nowadays. So yeah, every, volleyball every, would definitely. Everybody at the Nets getting posterized. <laughs> that helps you with your defense because, you know, handball eye coordination is like on, on Super Bowl. So where where does wrestling come in? Did you grow up a wrestling fan? Yeah, that's the cool thing. It's like I just have to like the shit, tolerate shit. It's kind of like if I had to try beer, damn it, I just want to try beer. Didn't actually try beer. I didn't actually start drinking until I was like 22. So I started training when I was maybe like 19, 20. And where was that at? Let's see. Well, the meeting spot was um, the Anaheim Marketplace. It's a place where they normally run Lucha Libre shows at. Okay. Uh, this place was uh, pretty special, like in particular, because uh, you have uh, the youth, uh, youth Ultimate Pro Wrestling School that was going on at the time, mm-hmm. and uh, El Segundo, and then you also had the Empire Wrestling Federation that had been around for, like, you know, forever since I started. When they all meet in one spot in Anaheim, you know, saying that's how you necessarily get like the first introduction of networking, you know, around the ring. So you see who's real, who's fake around, you know, <laughs> the first ring you ever see that's real, you know, legit, big ass pay per view WCW ring. So what the mass loose doors is like, she, I guess she goes mass route, she goes non mass route. That's some simple logic is like, <laughs> I took both. <laughs> <laughs> and what, what was the, what was the first uh, character or gimmick that you had? Um, I necessarily didn't have a name. I didn't necessarily know what to think, like, far as, like, character-wise. I want to be, like, generic and plain as possible, so I just called myself El Negro. <laughs> <laughs> and and this is before you ever met El Generico, I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, yeah. Way before I met El Generico, on some extra plain generic shit. It's like, damn, if, if I didn't know any better, I could have probably stayed being El Negro and have you know more than two hundred people chant Negro and unison? <laughs> so, I thought I thought it really be right about nowadays. You know, you know that type of vibe and energy. I like, had all that at the beginning. <laughs> and then the the first kind of uh, bigger company that you worked with was PWG, right? Um, shoot, yeah, PWG was actually a uh, place where I started doing like you know ring crew at. Okay, and then. Sent the rings over show. Then I moved on to you know the music portion of you know set the company. And then I I ended up got an opportunity on some stuff I wanted to do, which was like film. And then like if you were on like you know some cool ass matches, like you could watch the DDT four. I think it was like the first one, the tag team tournament. Uh, you actually see a tall tall dark figure in a light blue shirt filming. <laughs> 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 and that's my black ass before I got put on you know in a, in a suit and kick ass and shit. That's kind of where. Like that's where where we started. I don't know if it's still like that. I've been out for for a long time, but you you started training, paying your dues. You did the ring crew. You pulled cable for video. You did, you were the lighting guy. Yeah, the wrestling training isn't free. Like ever. no, no, not at all. We'll the, figure that out. Oh man, the game gets crazy after that. Yeah, <laughs> they, they would put my five seven ass in a security shirt, and me, I'm like, what what am I gonna do? <laughs> the, interest, the most interesting thing like during like training was watching like the flies drop. Because you knew you wasn't a flyer, 
Yeah. <laughs> you knew you was fly, but you know you wasn't gonna fly away. Like, so what was your what was your debut like in uh, PWG? Who did you who did you work in your first match, if you remember? Uh, I want to say it was a tag match. I think uh, I see it was like a big rivalry going on between like the. The internet guys, FBS, and uh, the Rare Pro guys, where I was training at, and um, I think they had me go against the Rare Pro guys, teaming up with Disco Machine, and uh, they, get, they gave me a tag team partner, Super Bad, and they ended up tagging us up like a couple of shows, and that was the debut at the musical. I was hella nervous, not really ready. I was in, I was doing the ring crew, my normal that day, and then um, one of the bookers, or well, one one of the six bookers, ended up catching me in the parking lot. So my one dude was gonna show up late. You think you have your gear on you? And that's that magic, you know, question. It's like, hey, man, you got your gear on you. I was yeah, like, you gotta oh, have your gear oh, with you. you ask me that question. I know the answer. Yeah, I got my gear on me. <laughs> <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> that's what happened. But I always, always like to tell that story and give a special shout out to the man that made my career happen at PWG, uh, Mr. Teddy Hurt. That's right. The fabulous Canadian backflipping dude himself. I mean, if it wasn't for being like really, really high with the insane clown posse and uh, the two dudes, uh, d- uh, lit and deranged that he had with him, and they all dressed like in the same clothes. This is my first time seeing them. They all walking through the damn, uh, music hall in slow motion in my eyes. It looked like a damn music video. It's like, <laughs> wow, are these, are these rappers arrested? It was like, my first time seeing this cool ass, um, non pink and black heart experience. It was like, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, how I didn't know that Teddy Hart was. Uh, was he like a prominent figure in PWG? See, the cool thing about Teddy Hart, he was good for PWG. But the bad thing was, was he's like, huh, since he was late, he got replaced by Skinny Black. He's like, he didn't want to wrestle anymore. And then, since the guy was like 10 times bigger than him, he definitely did not want to wrestle because why? His big ass might hurt him. He might get hurt. <laughs> so, this is a better suggestion. I suggest in all things Canadian, bro, it's like, you just go ahead, I hit the backflip. You get to destroy two dudes. You get to win against two guys. I'll just sit and watch and hit my back. <laughs> and get my promo. That's what I do. <laughs> so, <it's> amazing. <laughs> so you you he probably the ring. He walked hella slow. Takes his time with tank top on. I was like, wow. I got the white beard and the big ass hammer pants. It's like. One back flip, my like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you you primarily initially at least were were a tag team, you know, quote unquote specialist to to start out in, in PWG, uh, and you won a title with El Generico. What um what what do you like about tag team versus singles? Like, are you are you do you lean more towards one or the other? I actually try not to be conceited by either one. But uh, uh, everybody normally goes in the game to be singles competitors. Accidents and cool stuff does happen. Like, you know, generic could win in the tag titles. It's like, naturally, you probably wouldn't um, expect that. You see, uh, <clears throat> normally when um, heels get, or uh, faces get destroyed by, like, heels and stuff, it's, like, it's normally, like, to put over the heel mostly, I, I, I would suggest, because, you know, the, they gotta be like some strong ass, you know, assholes to carry a whole bunch of weight for a long period of time and stuff. It's like our faces could always be used like any point in time and stuff. It's like you got that in case of emergency face. We, we didn't necessarily have to win right there, but you know, I guess the time was right for us. And and just just for those that don't know, what was the team name of you and El Generico? Oh man, the team name was given to uh the guy that replaced me doing the music, uh Chris Jackson. You know, <clears throat> his name's two skinny black guy <laughs> obviously one of us was really black and skinny the other one was kind of beige and black and, <laughs> and and have you ever met Sami Zayn before uh inside the rock <laughs> inside no I don't know if I've been there <laughs> Um, and then I, I, I was reading up on you and, uh, and I did, I was watching some videos and I saw that you and, um, and Joey Ryan have had, have had a lot of history together. And one thing I noticed in your highlights is that part of your character is the invincible dick. So who came up with the, with the invincible crotch shot? 
Um, noticeably, my, my Crocs was never really invisible. <laughs> like, a double invisible? Yeah, like, not the whole thing, just, you know, a couple of things, like my balls. <laughs> I mean, Joy Ryan's known for for using one thing, one thing only. Yeah. I mean, I got a couple things. Yeah. Yeah. They still that keeps it for real. For real. So he's got he's got the the super super strength in his junk, and yours well, is like well, and yours is like bulletproof. Easily, easily make a tag team out of the two. The <laughs> name is simple. It's just dick and ball. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay so much money to see that tag team. Other than other than the crowd being like hella conceited like that one year when they were chanting, we are awesome during like a motherfucker's match. I'm like, oh hell, like, y'all just strap a motherfucker. I'm entering this thing. Like, this, this just give me like, you know, a good hour to work out and then go sit down and play some video games. <clears throat> <laughs> you know, that's what, happens, that's what happens when you tear your ACL, yo, you know, so you got time on your hands. Yeah, so so you, you tore your ACL um after it was when you your second PWG title reign, correct? And online it says you toured at a Juggalo Championship Wrestling show. Originally, I uh, dislocated my kneecap while I was uh, on tour with Dragon Gate uh, on Japan. That was my first and only tour. Uh, it happened on the second day. I was out there for two weeks. I think it was like the first and second match. <clears throat> and yeah, simple backflip, moonsault, man. Dislocated kneecap. I'm like, damn. I got to do the whole two weeks like this. Like instantly after the match, sneakcap swells up. I know it's all bad. I never really felt like that type of pain. Never had any like real dislocations or breakage. So, uh, yeah, finished out the tour. I wrestled like maybe a month or so. And then, yeah, I get a call from the Juggalo. Let's go do the uh, Slam TV uh, season two uh, filming. And uh, <clears throat> doing something simple like in the ring, I was supposed to like, be up for scrubs. For like you know, just the footage or whatever, and uh, do the simple uh, jumping in the ring, like uh, how CM Punk enters the ring, right? He just does a simple uh, over the top rope, just doing that, just blew out my knee. Yeah, it was probably you know, obviously weak to begin with. How long were you out with that? Oh, let's just say my timing was all messed up after that. I wouldn't say it would be like a downhill spiral, but then then that's very you know, the spiral if I was already a tornado doing some spiral stuff. It's kinda of just went sideways. So it didn't go down. It just didn't go nowhere. And then you you ended up in, in two thousand ten you, you retired via Facebook, but you've had a few matches since then, yeah? Yep. During that whole uh learning how to actually walk process, I managed how to <clears throat> become a young old veteran real quick. Yeah, just kind of kind of work differently. Yeah, that's what I mean. The whole part of training is like learning how to survive uh for as long as you want to survive and that's it. And so, that was a real lesson. like when I came back too early in my eyes and then I uh, ended up leaving and was gone for like you know, a whole entire year, like two thousand level was real slim. <laughs> Shout out to Baby Slim. <laughs> <laughs> that's what that's what I was gonna ask. Did you? <clears throat> how long were you initially out with the injury? Um, and you said you came back a little early. Was it um, like? Did you feel like it was okay to work on, or were you just like, "Fuck it, I'm I'm tired of sitting at home. I'm gonna go back to work." I don't know. I have a unique uh, workout regimen since you know, kind of long and lanky. So, I mean, not necessarily to. I have a short stock, you know, already pre-buffed to get a buffer and shit. I have to put in different work to do different things to operate the way I want to operate. Because uh, I'm a kind of tall, lanky figure. So, like, if I'm considered a high flyer, you got to wonder, am I necessarily going to get these uh, things <laughs> properly on these ropes and not, you know, box and look like assholes on <clears throat> every box mania. So what was the... What was the rehab process like for for well, for the knee? It was very unique because at the time I was in a unique situation where I was taking care of my grandfather with Parkinson. So my workout regimen was uh, deadlift uh, the, the old man off uh, his sleeping pallet <clears throat> onto his wheelchair, and then you know deadlift him off the bathroom and stuff. You know, saying 
that little mother cleaned him up real quick and then go ahead and just change and then, you know, wait till his lift come up. You know, they were doing the lift thing and then see him later on in the day and, you know, take care of him in the evening. So that, you, that was, uh, that so was rehab. you kind of had some, some real responsibilities that needed to get handled more so than kind of looking out, looking out for your, uh-huh. your wrestling career. Basically, yeah, it was basically non non related yeah. after I left. Um, and then, I mean, and then I was told, I I was told uh, by a wrestler named Disco Machine, and uh, at the time I went to go uh, to a Mach One show to see if I could get like a workout in, and uh, Disco told me uh, some good advice. He said wrestling, pro wrestling would always be there. And there was at the time where I was really feeling like, you know, pain and stuff. And when he told me that, it kind of made me like, kind of stopped me a little bit. Yeah. So that's why I ended up taking my 2011 like completely off. And how are you feeling now? How's, how's the body holding up? Well, let's just say uh, I went through a whole nother cool half state. Let's just say I ended up moving to New York secretly, but not secretly because I told some people so. <clears throat> Ended up moving to Baltimore, living there for like a cool month, and then ended up moving to New York. And during that whole time, that's when I made like a secret comeback. Uh, did a couple matches for, um, I want to say, a spot called Lotus. I don't know if it's still out in New York. So um, at the time, that's when I met, um, who is this dude? They're on freaking AEW right now. The Mexican, non Mexican. <laughs> Mexican. Yeah, the Mexican, non Mexican, the Cuban, not Cubanitos, but. Oh, like Santana the, and. The, uh, the, L- the, L- the, the Puerto Ricans. The, yeah, the Puerto Ricans. Uh, Santana from, uh, and Ortiz. Yeah, them guys. That's why I met those guys for the first time and stuff. And, you know what I'm saying? They ended up being cool dudes. And then, yeah, yeah. I was like surprised when I was like at home after all that, seeing those guys blow up and then coming out here performing, like. It was worth coming back a little bit. Let's see, uh, see what else we can do. And at the same time, I was doing okay uh, as far as, like, my injury goes. No surgery on the knee. Um, kind of just worked it out naturally and figure out what worked and what didn't work. And yeah. slowly but surely, I started getting, like, back to my old stuff. But then at the same time, I was cool with uh, the mat stuff because at the same time, I got an extra workout on my knee without necessarily messing them up. So did you go to more more of a, like you said, the mat stuff, like ground base after that, less less high flying? Well, you kind of got to think about it. At the beginning of the career, what did you necessarily see? Like a whole bunch of like ha-ha, hee-hee and stuff. It's like, and you know, a couple moves, a couple tricks, you know. Not really too much like, you know, hand-to-hand combat from a comedy man. It's like, shit. I mean, I give you a little something different. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily expect it if you wasn't necessarily paying attention to what you were saying, but but I mean, I I I could see you though doing a um, a little less flying and a little more because uh, I I saw some some ground game and some submissions and some holds that that looked uh, imposing. I mean, you're you know you you've said a couple times you're lanky and you're skinny, but you're still significantly bigger than your average guy nowadays. So when you put, I think I, taller that gives me like a cool ass at that. Yeah, like I got an easy easy eye on the headlock. Is like yeah. Man. You, I saw you had a uh, uh, Jack Evans in a in a dragon sleeper, and and it looked like if you wanted to, you could pull somebody's head off. So, and you you combine right, that with, with, the, with the balance I had is like I can even like backflip into something else and like pull his ass up, or whatever. Yeah, and you you combine that with the dancing, with the showmanship, <laughs> and the the comedy spots. I I I would describe you as an all around worker, an all around entertainer. I, I mean, I love That's your shit. You know, for. But I ended up, like I said, like I ended up coming, the, coming out with something more that I thought was going to happen. It's like a, it'll be like a pro wrestler and a luchador. It's like I graduated from the, the Anaheim school that, mm-hmm. you know, that first saw that ring at. It's like a big ceremony and everything. I was like, damn, never thought I would ever be a luchador. It's like I don't know Spanish. Well, you were in like, Nacho Libre. That makes you more of a luchador than most people. <laughs> yeah, that's before I graduated luchador school. Like, really? Yeah. How did that opportunity come up? Nacho Libre? Yeah. Shit, don't you got to be like an actor on SAG and 
you know what I'm saying, get all these cool perks and all types of cool shit, because I don't know none of that shit. That's <laughs> not what, that's not what I was. That's not what I did. That's not what happened. Everyone's imagination could go on some normal shit, but if you just there just to be there and, you know, you have your gear, like when you were in the parking lot at PWG, just setting up the ring, shit happens. You fuck around and get booked because you simply just have your damn gear. That's how PWG and not to leave right happened. So you might need an extra hand. So I need an extra hand because everyone had like audition matches, right? So one dude, uh, one luchador didn't have a, a guy to do a match with. That's where my gear came into play. Not only did my gear come to play, obviously the character and the dancers and the guy, 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 guy. The, uh, the director loved it and they actually just wanted the dance move for the movie. So I was like, they got picked for it, surprisingly. <laughs> what did you think when they told you you were El Snowflake? Um, I thought it was funny. I thought the whole uh, story was funny, actually, like when I did research on it. Come to find out, dude was actually like priest, reverend, whatever, like a, a real church and stuff, helping kids and whatnot. Through wrestling, I was like, ooh, forbidden for some. And that's why I thought, like, getting them. Like real messages, because I'm I'm a church going guy, you know what I'm saying? I'm a God fearing man. Other than man is like yeah, it's the same old guy. <clears throat> well, man. So so how was the experience of filming wrestling for a movie compared to a regular regular show? Yeah. Like where like which regular show though is like Well that's true. Did what, we only did like what T V program versus like a shitload of indies. In that one movie, I mean, I'm just like one time off from being the, the only child on the planet. It's not so bad being just one. So is is filming for a movie, I guess, would that be more similar to, like you did some time in Wrestling Society X, is it similar to that? Uh, it's going to be technical for nowadays, like on some update stuff. Filming for that would necessarily be like wrestling training, I guess. Okay. But the difference of that would be um, <clears throat> the badasses versus, you know, direct ass. Okay. Because badass would be like fucking, like, say, <clears throat> Brody King and uh, Tyler Bateman, you know, ROH guys, NWA guys, with this fucking going on, you know, right now and stuff, versus, you know, uh, Steven Spielberg for whatever he needs for his fucking team. <laughs> or whatever side they are kid needs to look good they look like a real champion yeah, well I need Steven Spielberg <laughs> to make a wrestling movie <laughs> so you yeah, cause I, don't, I don't believe in David Arquette training I believe in uh, Kid Chaos <laughs> <laughs> so you you shared some some rings and some locker rooms with some people that, that uh, have stuck around for a I've long I've been in some damn rings with motherfuckers I didn't really know and they come with me years later talking about, do you remember me, though? I'm like, oh, hell. <laughs> so. No, that's truthfully, oh, hell, no. <laughs> like, uh, like um, I was working on a Brian Kendrick show as as, as wrestling, wrestling Pop-Tart boy. It, it, it's pretty uh, interesting. I'm a wrestling uh, Pop-Tart rather than you know, regular Negro and uh, human tornado <laughs> snowflake. Brian Kendrick runs shows? A ranch shows? Brian Kendrick has a secretly dope ass show called Wrestling Pro Wrestling has a whole bunch of goofy characters. Uh, some wrestlers here and there, some superstars here and there, but mostly just cool ass male fast characters from the incredible mind of Kendrick and Friends. That's that's I, I love that guy. He uh when when I was training at APW, my my trainer was uh Brian Danielson, and his best friend in wrestling at the time was Brian Kendrick. So he came through and, and did like a guest spot training for like a week with us. And it just so happened to be while we were running King of Indies uh, at King City, California. And, and we went, set up the ring. We had hours and hours and hours of downtime. And I'm walking through the crowd with, with my circle and Spanky is walking the opposite direction. And he just gives me an overhand, open hand chop in the chest as hard as he can. It was loud. Show people always do that, man. Show people <laughs> always try to take it. <laughs> he, it made everyone jump back because it made such a loud noise, and security stepped towards him, and I had to like yeah, tell. Yeah, big time lyrics did you throw afterwards? 
<laughs> you got to a big time lyric after this. I, I, what do you say? I was I was just a student. I just cried. <laughs> it left a it left a perfect handprint on my chest. But yeah, that that's one of my favorite dudes I've ever met right there. You you okay, have met before I actually had a scene with Chris Hero, he uh, choked me completely out at an IHOP. <laughs> <laughs> what did you guys have legit heat or was it like he legit put me in the sleeper hole at, at IHOP and I was legit like out <laughs> just woke up crying laughing <laughs> it, it, it always went down at IHOP I was we, we always ended up at IHOP <laughs> so you Chris Heroes is is one of the guys that that comes up uh, next to your name a lot, and also you know Colt Cabana, low key. It should be it should be one dude and one chick that necessarily would do that type of cool magic because uh, slap both uh, men and women equally. I mean, if you haven't known noticed this, I actually do. I mean, I wrestle men and women, and at some points they, uh, they get slapped. It's like I could do that shit in real life, but they wouldn't necessarily understand why I'm slapping both men and women equally. Well, yeah, you're it's also funny. you're you're taking your lumps from the women, also, Candice and Thunder Rosa, and and you know what I mean. You're you're, you're equal opportunity. Well, yeah, everyone deserves you know a chance to get <laughs> by at least one human. I mean, it's a life experience. It's like bungee jumping, but you know, safer. I think. <laughs> but you just you did the you did like the backhand like pimp slap. Man, I was trying to be as creative as I can be. I mean, it was before, like, the world star and the smartphones and stuff. It was like, how could you necessarily uh, do the next big, the next, uh, big thing, you know, <clears throat> with, with, without that extra help? It wouldn't necessarily have to come word of mouth from all you guys. And I was just, like, instantly everywhere. Makes it a little harder, but. Hmm. It's still like a it's niche. It's still like a niche it's thing that people thing. don't do, right? <laughs> I'm always trying to see if anybody does anything cool that hasn't been done yet. It's like, I, I did a couple of things like, like, like did like a high jump maneuver over, uh, over the rope and I land on the back of the dude's head with a leg drop. Shit, I was right to the feet, all cat like and stuff. But <laughs> you're going to do that like so many times. Like, uh, what was it? Spiral tap that AJ Styles does. It's yeah. like, yeah, you can only do that. You don't really see him do that no more. It's like, yeah, he's hard to do. What? But he what? might get that shit under the table, though. I know that. What one innovation that that you did that I guarantee you nobody else did is have a Michael Jackson beat it knife fight in the middle of a match. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that was one of the ideas that popped in my head. Other than like an actual <laughs> move, it's like I had I had shit on my mind. <laughs> so but shit, I watch it. TV. So and do you? Shit, yeah. Do you go to whoever yeah. whoever's playing the music for that show and tell them, all right, look out, watch for this spot and play beat it? How do how do you come up with this idea? How do you execute it? Let's just say when you give uh future tag team champions a cool last name like two skinny black guys, <laughs> shit, you might know a thing a bit thing uh, or two about like being on cue and shit. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like well, at least one like, of you. <laughs> one or two things. As you pop in the CD, he's like, Nigga, I got you. I was like, What? <laughs> and yeah, everything was on point. That that that, that that match was pretty uh interesting. <laughs> um, who who were some of your favorite favorite opponents or favorite tag team partners that you worked with? Well, my favorite match was me versus Candice the Red PWG. Candice is legit. My, I posted that on my Instagram uh, TV account. Yeah, so it has the title on there. It says Hugh Tornado versus Candice, and the, the title was my favorite match ever. Yeah, she Kate. told me she, she, she told me uh, two two goals she had uh, that she wanted to do on the phone was one um, she asked to manage me on the phone. I was like that some cool shit. I was like first time I had like chick call me on business, and I was like Ooh. so Candace was like yeah, I asked Joey and then I just wanted to ask you if I can manage you at PWG. I was like, oh. I get a white girl. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But like me beating on someone like like you, lovely. <laughs> and that's where we start getting tricky, like you know, saying with the counts and stuff. You know, that got called the N word and all types of stuff at the time. And then you know, Candace was like, "Yo, my main go is WWE." And coming out of uh, Empire Wrestling Federation, you know, saying they were kind of WWF based, 
on some WWE stuff. So I was like, hey, she's in a good spot. And PWG was like, you know, put her on the, a bigger spot because she was like the only chick other than like I think Jay Chang. Just those two. Yeah, Candice is doing awesome in NXT right now. She's she's one of, one of my favorite women in, in all of wrestling. Sure. Slowly but surely, she's going to get the title, my friend. Yeah, I think so. Um, what uh, what are you watching these days? Are you are you keeping up with the with the business? Are you separated from it? What are you What are you into? Yeah, I'm mostly uh, in all honestly being my top flight security of the world. Craig is like yeah, it's hard being a security guard out here in these streets, man. It's like you got prostitution, drug addicts, fucking bums and shit, regular people. It's always fucking cool. You never really get a cool like celebrity to come by because you know. I don't know if anybody that really hangs out in Montclair, California, that could be a cool celebrity. I mean, Brian Cage might. He might. I think he might say that. <laughs> Sound like some cool ass place about people to hang out at just in his beach. Are are you are you still wrestling? Uh, when I was watching, checking out your uh, your Instagram, the TV page, it looked like there was stuff on there that was kind of current. Are you are you still doing matches every now and then? Or are you you pretty much right now? If anything. The, anything that I posted up on uh, IG right now, well, but lately the latest thing uh, I posted up was just like random clips of people getting knocked out. And just yeah, so <laughs> dude with no legs knocking somebody out. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was like on the, on the first like week of uh, quarantine, so I was like, ah, damn. <laughs> <laughs> still get sick just posting my stuff, but then I like being a little creative. But for the most part, it's uh, stuff that happened from I think one match last year. Uh, I'm thinking about posting the uh, Chief Kutaro match uh, from uh, Game Changer. And, yeah, pretty much anything that I can find that isn't necessarily on YouTube, that can uh, post up uh, pretty easy that's under 15 minutes. Yeah, I think uh, anybody that may not know who you are, they definitely need to go back and watch your shit on your, on your Instagram or on YouTube. You're, you're yeah, just a lot of different intricate stuff. It's like I got – Tournament matches on there from like uh, Jeff Peterson tournament that I did like in 2004 or five in Florida. I'm fighting uh, Delirious, and that that match right there was hilarious, hilarious. I never took 50 clotheslines from anybody. <laughs> 50 anybody. clotheslines in, in session in the corner. I was stuck. 50 clotheslines. Jesus. That match is on IGTV. If you don't believe me, it's about 50 clotheslines in a row. Did the crowd count them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> if I go to a wrestling show, I better not have to count past 10. God damn it. <laughs> but then he did the close down again. But, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so, so what's, what's next for you? Are you, uh, are you looking at doing anything, uh, in the, in the near future wrestling wise? I'm always down to surprise some people show up, uh, necessary where I'm not necessarily uh, wanted. That's normally what humans do, anyways, with or without the online capabilities. Just if the opportunity presents itself, something that sounds fun. Yeah, yeah I mean, I can even show up to a place where they necessarily don't know me and still, you know, rock the house on some weird surprise shit. Like, is it? Is there anybody? <laughs> is there anybody out there that you're seeing that you would like to work with? Actually, on some cool fact stuff, is like I'm actually trying to plan a cool short list of 10 people that want to wrestle because I'm almost to my 500 match. And that's honestly where I really uh, necessarily want to stop wrestling because I never imagined getting to 500 matches. That's a, that's a massive milestone. TV, non-TV is like, whatever. I got 500 matches. It doesn't have to be televised. That shit happened. Yeah. Yeah. God damn right. It did. So, <laughs> so who, who are a couple of people on that list that you, uh, that you like? I got Desmond Xavier for for one example. I always thought about getting back in the ring with Scorpio Sky. I mean, buff as shit. Got a little buffer. Shit to see if it still works. <laughs> hey man, uh, it's Scorpio. You and Scorpio. I always thought about bringing uh, Baby Smith, magical ass, hiding somewhere. Uh, baby sitting <laughs> as out of retirement. I mean, he hasn't wrestled in a while. I mean, he was always a good, uh, you know, performer in the ring. I think I only wrestled him one time in a tag match at like PWG. Oh, I I'd see uh I'd love to see you and you and Slim in a singles. Yeah, from now that I remember. Yeah. 
Or or yeah, you and you and Scorpio yeah. on Dynamite? Yeah, fuck yeah. Wait, what? Me and Scorpio on Dynamite? Yeah. See, that's just thing. I want to get jumped in the SCU for no reason. Since <laughs> I, like, technically, I've like, been here from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I've been wrestling for like a good 15, 16 years or whatever. Um, a cool fact about the poop. A cool fact about the 15, 16 years that nobody knows about that I've been like teasing and telling people is that, yeah, man, I don't know if it was a wise decision to decide to do pro wrestling after you, you know, come up with two years of back surgery. Noble back surgery, that same shit that Shawn Michaels had before he came back to motherfucking uh, SummerSlam to wrestle with Triple H. Wait, you, you had that surgery? Yeah, man, I had lower back surgery in uh, high school. Oh. Before you even before, wrestled, before I even thought about going to training, man, I always thought about going to training. You know, when you get a little older, but ooh, man, back surgery was a hell of a fucking roadblock. What what caused roadblock. that? Was that tra- it's from track? Answers is blocking your weight. What caused it? Yeah, let's just say bad body mechanics, and that can happen to anybody if you like, you know, don't lift up boxes like the correct way, using yeah. only your legs and not bending you. Yep, that, that, all that stuff is, it works for tall people, like, real easy, like, short people, probably not so much, but then, yeah, it'll happen. Sciatica, it's like, you learn new words right after that shit. You know? How, how Sciatica. long, how long was, how long were you out with back surgery? Like, especially at that age, was it a quicker recovery? At the time I, uh, at the time I injured my back, I was just starting uh, volleyball, and I, Went through the whole like JV season injured, so I, I played the, the whole season, and at the end of the season I got chose down to volleyball because they had playoffs. So I was actually good enough to fucking move up in the same season. Didn't really play too much, but got in like a couple of times. But they knew uh, about my injury, <clears throat> and um, I told them I was going to opt to take the surgery because they, they gave me uh, two options: the surgery or the Needle every six months in the spinal cord. I was oh like, none of that. Fun. I'll take the conclusion. Yeah, fuck that. It. Oh man, that's brutal. That's a, that's. I have not heard of a of a wrestling career beginning with the back surgery and then. Well, one of my inspirations to to, to wrestle was like like Shawn Michaels and and Bret Hart. It's like when, when you see like one guy doing one thing and another guy doing another, and they clash and stuff. Like WrestleMania twelve is like. Could change your brother's life forever. Is that is that your your all time match, the Iron Man? That, that that that's that's the one that necessarily you know gave me the idea. The shit that fucked it up was necessarily a house show that my mom took me to on a surprise birthday gift. And my mom doesn't like wrestling like whatsoever at all. It's like she honestly told me like 15 years ago before I got the first match that I was gonna break my neck. So I was like keeping that shit in the back of my head. It's like, all right, set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if mom hates that's wrestling. That's she that's still that's takes that. you to a show. That's that's a, that's a big that's gift right there. From the beginning, I haven't really broken my neck. I know some probably you know that's jarred, but I haven't broken like any bones in wrestling. So and that's what, that's what I thank God for training. It's like this is the real damn deal. You really can't tell me anything different about it. You can bring fake stuff from the you know fake ages, but where you really at right now? Do you think lucha training is is a little more uh, a little more safe? keeps keeps a few less broken bones with all the rolling and whatnot. I don't want to necessarily you know destroy like the pilgrimage of pro wrestling and whatnot like that, but they all understand how real and sensitive lucha libre is, just like how uh, pro wrestling maybe is in Japan. It's like different feelings. You know, in different places. For sure. Well, places like places like in Mexico and Japan, wrestling isn't as much. It's like, an, <clears throat> excuse me, it's not as much as like entertainment as it's a part of life. Like it's a huge piece of the culture. Right. They're they're so quick to make fun of pro wrestling because of the entertainment. Other than like the study and the research, is like <clears throat> also the traditional basics is like lucha libre and like you know Japan and. Europe and stuff like that. They they stay to it. But at the same time, it's like they can be entertaining, but I guess not as much as American pro wrestling. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Right. All right, man. They're giving us if, the one skin chooses all. It's like, damn, I can blend in with all except for the white. 
That's right. Put my mask on, bro. Put me in the key. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they're uh, they're giving us the go home signal here, so we got our go home questions that we ask all of our guests. Um, you know, we uh, we we like to just kind of get into the mind of the people that we're talking to, see what kind of makes them tick, what they like, what they dislike about wrestling. You ready? You ready to get after these? Oh my god! Is the brain Jesus? <laughs> About to become three time world champion. Let's go. <laughs> oh, we should have a belt for these. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh what is your favorite catchphrase in wrestling? Yours or somebody else's? You, wait, what was that? You, you said you want to know it, what my favorite catchphrase is? Ca- favorite catchphrase. It could it be It doesn't your... matter what my favorite <laughs> <is>. <laughs> you fucking got me. <laughs> Hell yeah. That shit gets me every time. Damn it, I was like, that's the best player had that shit in his life shit. Never seen time. <laughs> best cut off line anywhere ever is it doesn't matter. <laughs> you you you'll get somebody every time. What's your uh, one of my favorite? You know what I'm on? Uh what's your of of yours? Yeah. What uh oh, what, wait, 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 wait. what's your least favorite catchphrase or or line? Least favorite? Um Take your vitamins, say your prayers, and uh, drink your milk. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, the Hogan one, not the Hogan one, not the Blue Blazers. Blue Blazers is the shit. We uh, are the foundation of this show has become basically shitting on Hulk Hogan. <laughs> it's like damn, yeah, nobody likes Hogan. I like Hogan for his money. I mean, that was a hell of a come up. I should say Terry Bollea. We we got all the respect in the world for Hulk Hogan because none of us would have gotten to do what we did without him. But Terry Bollea is not the greatest human ever. I actually wanted to see the tape myself. I thought the page one was pretty interesting. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I actually got to see the Hogan one before they took it down. And the, the yeah, best... I might watch my page one later on. <laughs> <laughs> we'll try not to keep you too long. <laughs> Tasty is tasty, no matter the color. Uh, what what are the things in wrestling that make you pop? Um, shit. Maybe a person sitting in the crowd. The people that are reacting. That's just, that, that's just one person. I mean, other than that, it's like I never really had like a WrestleMania sized crowd. So well, it's like, yeah, if anybody shows up, man, I'm happy. What was the biggest was crowd? Like feeling. What was the biggest was crowd you had? The biggest crowd? Shit. All right. There was this one time where um, my trainer, uh, American Wild Child, he, he uh, gave me a secret mission, and it was to go wrestle at this event called Electric Daisy Carnival. And it was holding this event at a pretty uh, cool-ass place. I mean, it was very WrestleMania-like. It was um, L.A. Sports Coliseum. Oh, shit. Damn. That's, that's, that's a fucking big venue. Yeah, if anybody know about the LA Sports College team, that's basically where like Rams and U- uh, USC play. And um, yeah, um, that's your Daisy Carnival. I didn't know nothing about this. I don't know nothing about the music. Damn. Let's just say uh, they had like <clears throat> packed stadium. Yeah. She and does. It's a football game. And so everybody's on the floor and then stands and um, everywhere. And I'm on the main, you know, grand thing. It's like I got a picture posted on uh, Instagram too. It's just me, uh, my trainer, and uh, and then doing the mask and stuff. It's like, damn, we're, you can see the the little flame in the background, so you can tell, like, you know, from end to end, it was like, damn, WrestleMania. We know, uh, yeah, that's yeah, cool. this is indie, my friend. That's, that's fucking awesome. Legit. So, what what in wrestling turns you off? Um, necessary when people still call it fake. When all you gotta do is simply go to training and get all your answers answered, then we'll feel scoop. Sure, you have to pay to play, but then no, no, you get your answers. Yeah, you're real and fake. I couldn't agree more. I hate the word fake. Pisses pisses me right off. What is no, uh? Okay, I make a movie, nigga. Yeah, exactly. What's what's some entrance music that you love? Well, shit, that started us. Shit was always dope when when it played. I mean, oh, right now, like the only, the tightest female one will be uh, um Carmella. Cause yeah. Why it is just yeah, like baseline is like. <clears throat> I'm trying to think like old school, new school, like at the same time. Um, this is a NXT. I like NXT's uh, Biggie Langston's uh, first thing. Uh, dude, NXT Biggie was the shit. 
his his whole his whole yeah, gimmick and man, I knew five. Count count to five and all that. Yes, I love it. counting to five song. Yeah, it was very hip hop y and I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Which uh, what entrance music do you dislike? Um, shit. Who has some horrible ass music? Oh, Eric uh, Eric Rowan. Cause why? Uh, shit. His like banjo shit. I don't, I don't know. Like musically, <laughs> the company just don't know musically what to do with that. Fool is like, yeah, they got everything else yeah. creative, like on some creative stuff. But then, like, when it comes to whatever he needs to come out to with music, oh man, they should have bobbed himself every time. Should have bobbed. Running out of toes. Should have bobbed. What's uh? What's some uh, attire? Some gear that you love? Um. Shoot, man. I always liked my wrestling gear that I wrestled in ever since um, the thrift store era. I mean, I started off at the thrift store. Nobody super knew that. You know what I'm saying? Because my first suit was my grandfather's prom suit. No way. Cool that. Cold oil, you know what I'm saying? Like, maybe we'll check it out or whatever. But, and then the next suit was like an all brown suit, which is necessarily I got at the thrift store because it was the only suit that actually fit my skinny ass and everything else was like super fat and stuff. I'm like, man, this thrift store is whack. But there's one brown suit in there. You know what I'm saying? You see the brown suit like a whole bunch. Yeah. And then, like, after that started getting a little colorful because uh, everything started getting a little colorful for me. And then that purple suit was necessary, you know what I'm saying? Highly expensive. I don't know if anybody knew about Stacey Adams. <laughs> I, know, I know about Stacey Adams because of Andre Adams Nicotina. Not necessarily the cheapest motherfucker. <laughs> <suit. laughs> <laughs> I remember so, rocking Stacey Adams like, for like over 10 years in uh, the purple, the, the red, and the blue. So, Nowadays, when people just only see me in my blue pants, it's necessary a cool happiness is other than, you know, simple, you know, don't be greedy on money. But yeah, this is Stacey Adams. This is this expensive pants, big guy. I, I love it. You can't afford dummy. I'm like, yeah, you can't afford dummy. <laughs> I love your first, your first attire being your grandfather's prom suit. That's, that's <laughs> family lineage. I love that. Well, yeah, he went to my very, very first uh, main event, which is at the Rep Pro event where I was training at. And uh, yeah, man, that's the only match you actually seen. That's dope. What uh, what wrestling attire do you dislike? Wrestling attire I dislike. Yeah. Um, the dudes that come in like with the leopard uh leopard trunks and like nothing else. Yeah, the, the like the the uh animal print oh, yeah. shit. Look, look. actually, actually <clears throat> hairy ass thigh like muscle legs is like that, that's part of the gear too it's like that's just crazy I don't know how that happens <laughs> like looking like they're on a beach in France like, they could rim that mess into like a design or something but they chose to just look like crazy so <laughs> and, and th- this is one of the questions we ask where it usually makes people pause but you've actually already done it a good 10 times <laughs> what is your I best I realized realism is like men and women equal <laughs> I mean and don't have relevant I will slap the fuck of anybody disrespectful, be a man or woman. <laughs> what is your best wrestling impersonation besides Teddy uh, Hart? Oh man, I love doing Teddy Hart. Because <laughs> Teddy comes from real, they come from a real place. They come from the heavens with Jack Liss. <laughs> Does anybody have any oil for Lee? <laughs> All right, last. Hey, Dan, Last one is your favorite good bad moment in wrestling. So something that is so bad in wrestling that makes you laugh. Um, Ashley Dad survived uh, virtually a pretty cool ass wrestling career uh, with a secretly surgically repaired bad back. And um, on that Tommy Dreamer hernia stuff, it's like, oh yeah, had to live the life, bro. <laughs> <laughs> all right man well we really appreciate the time getting into the into the head and the career of human tornado um where can people find you at on social media man i'm not really on social media too much anymore i mean i got rid of facebook i got rid of twitter like all oh, within a year ago i haven't been on that thing for a while so if i seem mma to anybody yeah that's kind of what happened the only thing i really have is instagram why in the pictures nobody really hardly gave a damn <laughs> that's that's uh we're on we're on instagram too i had to get off of twitter once the bucks got off of twitter i said that's my cue i'm getting the fuck off of twitter too yeah it's like once you stop 
posting pictures and start typing. It's like, fuck, I don't want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also just didn't need other people's opinions on, on Twitter. Instagram's a little more mellow of a place. And then fools got mad on me on Facebook for posting or reposting videos. Like, I'm reposting videos that are not mine. And they get mad off of, like, I guess what I'm reposting. I'm like, well, I didn't. Film this, I didn't even edit it. <laughs> How you getting mad at me? <laughs> All right, man. Well, thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thanks for sharing with us. Um, and uh, the folks can catch you on Instagram. They can catch us on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and we Instagram at tornado underscore snowflake. Absolutely. I'll be on their uh, all the quarantine. Whole whole quarantine, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Get 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 at them, sweat hogs. All right, man. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Peace. Peace.